I remember we were at your place, I guess, um, and you just described a friend's performance to me. And when you described it to me, it wasn't a suggestion for what we should do at the time of looking for a collaboration. I think you just said it very casually as we were having a cup of tea or something. And you described this performance um, of a friend of yours, Orion. He has this performance called A Banana. And it really resonated with me. I always try to think about what I mean when I say banana. Right. So I always, when I'm, I'm, I'm making the performance, I think about, like I think about um, questions of like language and identity and, uh, and uh, yeah, all these questions about the way the mind works and all these, all these things, they're all concentrated in this one gesture of just saying one word and holding up one object. My original re reaction was, that sounds like a great performance. And then you said, Mike, you would be good at that. And I, would, and I kind of said, no, nah, come on. And then he said, yeah, man, you should do it. And then I said, no. And then, you know, we went back and forth until it was like, oh, maybe. We were having a conversation with Mike and I just mentioned the banana performance because it's a like, and suddenly he gets so excited about it that I thought, okay, if he's so excited about it, maybe he should do the piece. Why not? He's a bit charismatic, he's extroverted. The piece might suit him quite well, I thought. Most of my work is in a sense sort of, like in a way it's like emotionally, emotionally content free. Mm. It's like logical kind of propositions right. and logical games yeah. and, and language games. I had already been quite interested in wanting to do a non-musical performance. It's something that I'd never done before. Um, so this kind of maybe felt like a pretty nice first step into that. Um, and so the piece basically became me performing a performance based on your description of the performance. We suddenly understood that this process of me describing a performance to Mike and then him realizing this performance was in itself an interesting process. So then we thought, okay, maybe that's the piece, that should be the piece. So we called it the transmission and it basically consists of one person describing a performance to another person who then has to go and realize this performance according to the description he has received. And basically, that's what we did. I was extremely nervous and it took me a very long time to even finally kind of agree to do it. He kept telling me he was nervous, but I, I didn't believe him because I thought there was no reason for him to be nervous. The piece was very simple and he, he okay, he's not a performance artist, but he's a musician and he has lots of experience being on stage. I was actually uncomfortable with interacting with the audience. That's something that really wasn't so natural to me. He had to take bananas out of the box and say banana every time. And then he had to take other objects out of the box, but still say banana. And then he had to give these objects to the audience and try to make them say banana with him. And then gather all the people on stage and, and start chanting banana, banana with him. And that's the piece. It's a simple piece, but if it's nicely done, it's just a very nice piece. The day of the performance arrives. We are all there. Orion is there. I made sure he was coming by telling him that I was presenting a new piece and I needed some feedback from him. And, uh, but I didn't tell him what we were going to do. I didn't tell him what was it about. So he came ready with his iPad to take some notes and he sat on the first row and the performance starts. People in the audience started saying banana quite early and with me. And then I was like, wow, this is giving me a lot of confidence. Everything seems to be going well. Mike seems to be enjoying himself. The people seems to be enjoying the performance. And then 
what happened happened. And looking back at the video, it I find it very hard to watch. I remember I like I wasn't really I really wasn't happy with the situation. Mm. And I was like I watched it for a while and at a certain point I was like, okay, I have to like I have to do something. It was clear to us that we wanted to um, acknowledge Orion and it was fair and just to do so. But it was also clear to me that um, it'd be more of a surprise to do it in the end. If we were to have done it in the beginning, then I think people would already know, oh, okay, so they're doing something based on another person's work or inspired by another person's work. But we wanted to just open, we wanted to start from a kind of um, maybe more of an unknown place. And I think it, our decision was based on the fact that it would have given more impact to the performance if we would have um, made the acknowledgement at the end. I didn't know how it was going to end. Yeah. And I thought, like, if people think this is my work, that's like, mm. you know, this, it's kind of terrible. Was it actually his performance? Um, from our point of view, it was a performance in a performance, a performance embedded in a performance. So it was like more like it was my work, but it was a bad copy of my work. Yeah. And that was what was the most, yeah, that was what the, the really frustrating thing yeah. about it. Yeah. That the, the, the work didn't, it didn't convey the same thing that I wanted it to see. And then at the moment when Orion stood up and walked out of the room, I remember my energy just totally dropped. Before that point, I was a few times trying hard not to laugh, but then when that happened, it was like there was no way that I was going to laugh anymore. At that point, I thought maybe it was enough just to leave. I mean, I went, I went to the back of the room, I sort of, sort of looked at the room, and then I kind of... I went, I think I, like I just went out for a second and kind of got, I went into the bathroom and just kind of like, was like, oh, like, I have to let people know that this isn't, that this isn't my work. Maybe it was just the way that I was acting it that he really didn't like. Looking at myself, I feel a bit silly. I don't know, like I look a bit clumsy or something like that. That's also what I didn't like about the rendition yeah. of the piece, yeah, yeah, was yeah. it had no... Yeah understanding of it. It only had this like comedy level. Yeah. We never thought he would do such thing. I mean, I don't want to over dramatize what happened, but we really never thought he would come on stage and interrupt the performance. What do you think about his reaction? In the performance? Yeah. Um. I really wasn't expecting it. Two minutes after Orion left the room, he comes back in. He goes onto stage and very relaxed, he says, Hi everybody, this is my piece, this is a bad copy of my piece, and you can check this iPad, I have pictures that show that I've been doing this for years. It was quite intense and it was quite amazing. What I injected into the space in terms of uh, felt communication with the audience was exactly what was I felt was lacking from the yeah. piece in, in a way. In any case, I think Orion's interruption definitely made the performance much more interesting. Even though for a while afterwards, it was like, what the hell happened? What was that? I had this flash that, you, that maybe, I don't know, that you hadn't, like you just hadn't realized like what was at stake yeah. for me. Orion has developed a very special relationship to his piece because he's done it so many times in so many places. He knows all the possible variations. He knows all the subtleties of the piece. And I, I was just not aware of that. I didn't know the piece was so important for him. I never realized in a sense like how important the, the con that this emotional content was to me in the work. And feeling, feeling pretty bad if we defended Orion or not even though it was not, never our intention to offend. I really thought he would either find it funny or just not interesting, but I never thought he would defend his piece. It was never 
trying to be a complete copy, which is how he felt about it, which is why he interrupted. Um, well, it's not only why he interrupted, but I think on the first point, he thought it was a, a copy, a bad copy, and then he wanted to save it, his performance. So somehow he saw, he saw it as his performance, which is fair enough, because, I mean, it's almost exactly the same. After the performance, we were talking with Ryan, and then one of the organizers came and gave me my fee for the performance. And I took the money and I looked at the Ryan and I told him, like, maybe you should take the money. And <laughs> he took it. And I think then I realized, um, then I realized maybe that he was being serious, that he was not, like, he was really upset and really thinking that we shouldn't have done that. If we would have tried to replicate Orion's work, I think I would have then looked at a YouTube and really tried to understand it in that way. Seeing Orion's performance afterwards is completely different. Yeah. I don't think I, I would be able to perform it the way he does. The event mm. is interesting. And the event is a, partly because it is this kind of paradox. Yeah. Like it, because for me, like it wasn't, it isn't a piece. Yeah, yeah. It's like something that, it's something like that happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And to start, you know, and to, so to have this conversation and to start talking about it as a piece is, for me, is like already quite problematic. Yeah. I don't know if this is true, but it sort of suggests that life is, in a way, more interesting than art. Mm -hmm. That um, that you know, to make really interesting art, you have to you have to I don't know allow unexpected things to happen. But then, by even by trying to create it, you're already yeah you're already bound to fail. It was also interesting to see that after Ryan interrupted and after this problem emerged, people were more eager to participate because they felt that things suddenly, rules were suddenly subverted or suddenly it was not clear anymore what was going on and, and maybe they felt that they could be more part of the situation or they could be more part of a situation. Now that participatory art is, participatory art is a thing, I, sometimes I almost feel like it's almost a, I don't know, like it's kind of, it's out there in the world, this idea. Mm. So I kind of feel like if I go to see a performance, yep. in a way like every performance is an invitation to participate. Mm. When an artist allows you to participate or when a, an artist tells you what to do or create a space for you to participate, I'm already turned off because I don't feel like I'm at the same level with the artist. I don't feel like uh, I can have much of a voice there. It's on us to decide to change these rules when, when, we, when we are part of a performance. To have somebody in the room who's just himself, just being present mm. and just changing the rules yeah. is, it can like really, yeah. uh, it's a really incredibly powerful thing. In the end, it's like, people like reality was in question because actually he was not part of the piece but people were not convinced by that i think this is largely due to your previous work where there would be interruptions but they were usually staged but there was that girl at the end yeah. who like got yeah, yeah, yeah. but she got really she, annoyed yeah, with yeah, me yeah. because she thought that i was just like acting the yeah, whole time yeah and i was still acting yeah yeah even when, and I remember I got really annoyed, I got, yeah, at, I at the end I was like, yeah. fuck you, yeah. like, you know, you, <laughs> I remember, yeah. and she was like, ah, ah, ah. Yeah. and then some people came up to me and said like, oh, man, you were like, you're, you're such a good actor. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting because I was speaking to, we were speaking to Orion after the piece and um, we couldn't work out if he was acting or not. It's like the audience couldn't work out if I, if my laughing was an act or if Orion's presence was an act, but then afterwards we couldn't work out if Orion was acting, we couldn't, and we also couldn't work out if he was angry or annoyed or both, or just making fun to provoke. And I think he also, so soon after the performance, he also didn't know himself. 
I remember him, he was also kind of, we were all like still caught up in the, what had happened. It took a while to shake that off. After, after that day, like we, there were all these conversations going on, like for, for a month or more, like, and I remember the people who were in the performance, the people from the audience kept asking me like, about it and most of them thought it was it was um, all fabricated and uh, yeah that it was it wasn't real and <laughs> I had no way to convince people that 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 Orion was not uh, a plan. I get the feeling that like truly like really great artists mm. they or really great art pieces maybe more than great artists happens when artists are like able to, in a sense, control, are able in a sense to gather in like the unpredictable, like the unexpected, mm. and like hold it within the frame of the work. Some art pieces have this ability or this quality that they can gather in some life, some unexpected things, some chaos or whatever you want to call it. But I don't think that was the case with the transmission because we never expected that to happen. What happened was mainly due to Orion's actions and, and decisions. We just wanted to do a performance. We, as an audience, when we go to see art pieces, we remain almost always in a very passive position. When we have this ability to act, to intervene, to do whatever we want, to participate on our own terms, and yeah, although you understand more or less why this doesn't happen, is still a bit disappointing because there's so much potential in there. Um, the third set is a piece by Diego Shami and Mike Makovsky. It's called The Transmission and it's performed by Mike Makovsky. So at this point, I know that it's has something to do with the banana performance. Hmm. I don't. It, I'm like, okay, it's different because he's just put the banana back in a box. Right. Like the piece is different. Right. Also, he's hiding his head in the box. It's hmm. like. I think you were already looking at me, like, like you know, like trying to understand what. Yeah. What's, what's going on? And he looks at me there as well, oh, like no. with the second banana. <laughs> so it's like, I also like, you're like, okay. At this point, I thought it was gonna go some other direction. Right. I thought this was just a starting point and it was gonna reference it and mm. go off on a tangent. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Let's like see where that yeah. plays yeah. out. Banana. But then when it just became like, the same piece, yeah. but in bad version, yeah. I was like, whoa. Banana. <laughs> <laughs> 
Banana. 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 This is like such a decisive moment in the yeah, piece where you right. bring out yeah. a lemon. Yeah. It's like the it's the, the whole the whole universe of the mm. piece like is on this one moment. Yeah. My, I mean, in my version, it's different. I would have placed the bananas in the 
I would have been already going in and out of the audience by now. <laughs> Banana. Banana. Are you really looking for... I think I'm looking for my banana. Your banana. In the iPad. Yeah. Banana documentation. <laughs> But it almost makes the piece better. It feels like there's something at stake. At this point, I didn't get to feel like you left. Like I, I, I really felt like you were making a statement, and I felt fuck, we, like we fucked it. Like what? what? Yeah. Like, then I was kind of like for the first time I realized. Yeah. Like what? What did I do? But I think for me at this point it was both. Huh? It was like I was upset because I am quite attached to the piece. And it's horrible to see your work. Like, for me, it's horrible to see 
yeah. my work, just like distorted in this way. Yeah. And to see people's Banana. impression of the work like distorted in this way. But also I thought, Banana. if I stand up, Banana. then it's gonna create this, it's gonna, it's gonna make Diego wonder what's at stake. Mm. It's gonna make, uh, maybe Banana. it's gonna like make the performer wonder what's Banana. at stake. And that's anyway has to be a more interesting outcome. Banana. 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 That was your friend Renata there, and she didn't accept the banana from Mike. And I think she was maybe the only one in the room who knew the performance. Yeah. And maybe she was trying to kind of defend you or something yeah, yeah, by yeah. not engaging. She was really, she was really upset about it afterwards. Yeah. Banana. <laughs> banana. <laughs>
banana. Banana. <laughs> Banana! Because <laughs> actually this is my performance and it's kind of banana. annoying to have banana. To do it. banana. Banana! 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 Some of the people were kind of thinking you were acting, some of the people were really looking at the iPad and saying, mm. and saying okay, maybe he's, maybe he's this real, maybe he's... Yeah, but it doesn't look like, I mean, I don't think it looks like, well, it's funny, isn't it? I see, at some points it really doesn't look like I'm acting because I, there's some points where I just don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like somebody, there's three people on stage like chanting banana, banana, banana at you yeah. and you're just like... You, what's the yeah. what's the sensible defense against that? It's yeah. less like yeah. you know you're really like annoying in a yeah. really like yeah. tight spot. Yeah. I think by this point I was almost like like just interested to see it. See what happens. Okay, thank you everyone. Just want to check up the board. Um, this piece, the, uh, the transmission, is a piece by like Mike Mikowski and myself, Diego Chami. Uh, it basically consists of one person describing a performance to another person who then has to reenact the performance according the description they have received. Um, in this case, the original performance was by a British artist called Orion Max. Um, Orion is, uh, in fact, in the audience to the tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't know we were going to do this. Uh, I don't know what he thinks of this version, but please give him also a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs>
watching the, the, the titles come up, the phrase, the kind of like the horror of the spectacle comes to mind. Mm. That it's like this, it, it's kind of like this trap, like this conceptual trap that you can't get out of this performance. I wanted to close it down and yeah. stop it because yeah. it's like I wasn't, I, think I wasn't happy with it at all. Yeah. But, um, but then in, by doing that, like it, somehow it anyway revolves into the performance. It's like this kind of thing of, um, of like living in a spectacle and you can't get out of yeah. the spectacle. Yeah. Yeah. In a way that was like a truly perf- perf- like participatory piece, mm. because in, not just because of this dissolution of authorship, but because the people who could claim some authorship over the situation, they didn't even want to have that authorship. Yeah. They wanted yeah. to extract yeah. themselves yeah. like as yeah. far as... Yeah. They could. For the three of us, it's like this, 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 this uh, kind of like hell situation. Would you do the piece again? I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe just the first half. <laughs>